Hey guys, welcome back to No Man's Sky Waypoint version 4.03, I think now. We got a few updates and uh, things are running a little bit smoother. We're gonna make some money in this episode. We're gonna work on some early game money techniques and uh, see what we can do to get closer to a better ship if we find one that we like. But uh, if you notice the Radiant Pillar now, it's worth 4.8 million. It used to be worth half a million. That's crazy. Uh, so it's, I think it's because it's related to the number of slots they have, the price is, and it has a lot more slots now. It used to have 15 slots and now it has 25 slots. So uh, I don't know the exact metrics on how they figure the price out, but everything is more. Like this C-Class shuttle, eight, four, that's crazy. Anyway, we're gonna make some money this time and uh, show you how we're gonna do that right now. All right, now we're in our ship. Let's go ahead and pop some charts and see if we can find a crashed ship. Abandoned building, not what I'm looking for. Uh, if it won't let you use it, it means it was gonna give you an abandoned building or whatever you just found. Observatory, not what I'm looking for. You're gonna make me buy more charts, aren't you? Distress signal, that is what I am looking for. Distress signal will be a crashed ship. Now, you do have a small chance that this crashed ship uh, still has an owner that is uh, next to the said crash ship and will not appreciate you taking it. But if there's not an owner there, it's the law of salvage and you get what you get. All right, so we're coming in on this distress beacon. Um, I'm trying to come in relatively slow to give it time to load in. I have had instances where the things did not load in because I came tearing in too fast. So I'm kind of just coming in easy pace so it can load in. And if I don't see it load in immediately, I'm gonna kinda swoop around. There it is. All right, so I see a ship. Now that beacon will stay there until I land. Looking for an alien walking around. Is that a guy? There is a guy. Yep, stupid Corvax. So I can go into photo mode and uh, it kinda pauses time in single player. And you can see that dude right there. He just wants help. He just wants me to fix his ship for free. We ain't about that life here. So, if I leave that marked it, by not landing at it, then um, I can go get another chart, and it will definitely be what I'm looking for, and I won't have to deal with that heartbreak anymore. So, run back and get another chart. I knew they were going to make me buy more charts. I want to scrap a ship and see what that's all about. Scrapping ships is one way that I make early money in the game, and I want to see what that's about. There are so many different paths that you can go on. They have closed down a number of the easy money paths that uh, have been open for three or four years. So we're definitely going to be looking for uh, new ways to do things. Now there's a chance I get a um, freighter still, so I'm going to buy two so I know I'm getting what I want. Distress signal. All right, so we got a second distress signal. Just got to make sure we remember where that first one was and don't go to that one. Now, I don't want to use that other map right now because there's a chance I get something else. Um, I want to wait. All right, that was the original distress signal. That's the new one. All right, coming in on the second distress beacon. Now, this better be what I'm looking for, right? Oh, oh, I see why it broke, dude. You, you lost one of your cans. It's no good. No good at all. We want two cans at all times. All right. Now, this is a distress beacon for a crashed ship. And since there's nobody here asking for help, we can claim it. So we can come right over here. And it is a B-class. Dang, it's huge. And that's what she said. All right. We're going to grab this, claim the ship. And uh, let's take a look at it. Now, uh, that will become our primary ship. So if you walked over here, um, you're going to have to call your ship back in or fix this one to leave. Now, my ship's right there, so I don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to hop in this thing, and you can see that it is broken. Uh, we've got to fix pretty much everything, and then these slots will remain blocked off until you fix the item. Now, it is generally not worth it to fix this stuff. It is a fun exercise to do if you're kind of doing a role play thing. 
um, where you have to kind of find the resources to fix it. I've done that in permadeath before. It made it a lot more interesting for me. But uh, you're usually better off kind of just trading the ship or scrapping it for parts. Now, generally, you can destroy these things. Yes, you can still destroy the broken parts here. You can't destroy these four, but the uh, upgrades you can. And then that'll give you some uh, materials two wire limbs that's valuable and uh the chromatic metal so we're gonna go ahead and take those we're gonna hop out of that because that is annoying and uh we're gonna grab the other loot around here which there's generally berry technology which we know we like that now this is also the other reason to come here because you're gonna get technology blueprints from these if you pick the right choice so you can search for functioning technology or goods that's gonna be um money but I would rather have technology. And I got a blueprint for the teleport receiver. Nice. So those blueprints mean I don't have to buy them later because I got them for free. So, I thought I heard somebody landing near me. All right, so we're gonna leave that here. Don't worry about it. Uh, we will be able to uh, get it later unless they've changed that part of the game and we'll find out shortly, okay? So, we're finally heading back to base which is what the game has been begging us to do. Oh, you know what? I got one more chart. I got one more chart, guys. Can I get another crash ship, please? Is that it? Load in, please. There we go. You're a shy fella, aren't you? All right, so this is a shuttle. There are explorers, shuttles, fighters, and freighters, the four main types, as well as the exotics that I showed you. Um, and they each kind of specialize in one thing. This is a crashed shuttle. Poor guy. So let's see what we get here. B class again. Nice. And we'll go ahead and uh, claim. So you can claim or swap, but uh, I don't want to swap it. So I'm going to claim it. You can have up to nine ships now, guys. It used to be six. If you're coming back after a while, but uh, uh, nine is uh, nice better than six. Right? All right, so let's go ahead and grab the good stuff out of this. And that's the only upgrade I see, right? Right. Now let's see if we can learn some more technology. Grab the uh, buried tech. All right, where's your beacon, bro? There it is. All right, now let's check the distress beacon for some tech. We're gonna loot for some technology and we got hazmat gauntlets, which we can install. Mm -hmm. Now that we've gotten uh, two free ships, let's go back to our base. And don't worry, you don't need to remember where they were. Because we should be able to call them in. Now flying up out of the atmosphere and then back down is definitely going to be the quickest way to go from point A to point B on a planet if it's marked. Alright, we'll start refining as always. Check our base computer archives and it should give us plans for a uh, save beacon, I believe. So it's decoding a message, traveler fly to us, we're in the stars. Signal acquired, life signs detected. So this is taking us on the awakenings quest. Um, I'm gonna wait a minute to do that, okay? I thought I was gonna get a save beacon there, but uh, apparently I'm not. That's right, it, it's not until after I fly to the next system. Uh, this is taking me on a path to get my hyperdrive now. So if you're just cannot wait to get somewhere else, uh, go ahead and uh, Follow the quest line and it will take you to get a hyperdrive so you can leave. Now, currently, we cannot use a hyperdrive and none of the ships that we buy will have a hyperdrive until we learn how to make it ourselves. What do I have a milestone for? Drifter? All right. Now, I'm going to um, try to call in those ships to show you guys something. Uh, so you want to come down here to summon vehicles, and then if you scroll over, you see other ships. And, uh, you can see them, but cannot launch starship damage, so it knows it's broken. But, if I reload the game or go through a teleporter, it will forget that it's broken. So, I am not, I'm going to go through the teleporter in a minute, so I'm just going to go ahead and reload my game. And reload my autosave, which is now loaded back in. And I always hit the raw button. 
So there it is. We can call in that ship. And we can call in that ship. So we've got our two uh, crashed ships here, and they're still on fire. And if you go to the ship, you'll see that the launch thrusters have been mysteriously fixed, but not the pulse engines. So we still have to fix that if we want to fly it to space. Or we can just take the teleporter, and uh, our ship that is active will teleport with us. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we can go to the space station and scrap that ship and uh, make some money. Wow, an oxygen that lasts an hour and 15 minutes as opposed to the carbon. So uh, we're going to go to the station. And there is our ship, no longer on fire. They do not allow on fire ships in the station. It is a hazard against OSHA rules. And so you can see that that has been fixed as well. So now we can fly it around, although it has no shields, hyperdrive, or um, weapons. But, you know, if you want to fly, you can. At least it won't be beeping like that. But what I'm going to do is scrap it. So I'm going to come over here, and I can claim scrap worth 2.5 million units. Let's get it. Now, we don't get the money. We get scrap worth that amount of money. And usually you get some um, upgrades as well. We got one Starship Shield module and a storage augmentation. That is valuable. Okay. These are looking a little different. So storage augmentation allows you to add a spot to a different ship. And so it's going to bring back your original ship. Unfortunately, you can't choose which ship that brings in. But, uh, you know, something. Let's go ahead and sell that stuff we just got from scrapping that other ship. And then we'll go grab the other one and do the same thing. So we're going to offer to trade. We're going to sell. Selling to these guys generally does not affect the economy unless that has changed. Um, I threw it in my ship real quick. So this guy, subatomic regulators, 1.8 million. That's the bulk of it. I had uh, this is worth another half a million. Don't sell your storage augmentation, even though it's worth 100,000. You want that. Those are hard to come by. I am going to sell those Gek relics and uh, the spool of nano cables. Now I have 3 million bucks and I could buy a crappy ship. Uh, none of these are crappy enough for Bob, but we're getting closer. Ship scrapper Bob on the scene. So we're going to go back to our base. And uh, they park your ship relative to your base computer. So uh, yeah, that's that's where it uh, that's where it landed. That is a a really nice parking job. Look at that! I'm a magnate. Earned 2.2 million bucks. We go. Nice landing. Nailed it. Let's go ahead and call in that other ship. Here she comes, and now we'll go uh, jump through the teleporter again. There she is, my one-canned wonder. Uh, they started making these um, non-symmetrical explorers, and they, they drive me crazy. Drive me crazy. I will scrap every single one I get. This one's worth 3.2 million in scrap, nice. So that one gone and the radiant pillar is in its place uh hyperdrive module pulse engine module so i got two b-class modules compressed indium scraps whole bunch of nano cables yeah so that's worth three million right there so they're giving you more valuable stuff so it's less items so let's go sell this stuff to this guy and we could afford his ship, but I, I mean, I don't want it because it's a 24 and 12 and I've got a 25, 13. So it's actually worse than mine. Let's so uh, we're going to offer a trade. We're going to go to sell. We're going to sell all of those nano cables. And then we're going to sell these compressed indium scraps. And now we have 6.2 million bucks. Wait, what is the what the radiant pillars were 4.8 million? All right, I think we're on to something here, boys. I think we are on to something. Used to be you get a couple hundred thousand for scrapping a ship, but the values have greatly increased because the value of a ship is based on its inventory. Uh, uh oh, is this is this thing on? Hmm. And the, when they change the inventories, they may have messed up the values. Uh, so let's exchange charts. Let's get another one of these uh, emergencies. And we hopefully that will take us where we want to go. 
And we got a distress signal. Sweet. All right, let's go, baby. So now we need to farm up some nav data so we can get more charts. Oh, another one of these one canned fellers. I wouldn't buy these things. They crash all the time, apparently. Ah, oh, boo, C class. Claim it. And let's go grab some technology. Um, let's enter peacefully and search the cockpit. I think that's going to hurt. Let's shoot the Sentinel. All right, so now we got an advanced mining laser. We are learning the tech. Let's go ahead and install that. That is actually super uh, useful. Um, and we have those items because we've been scrapping ships. All right, and now I have an advanced mining laser, which means I can mine up pretty much everything on a planet now. And I can mine faster. Okay, so that's a distress signal. We'll go there in a sec, okay? That's going to be a crashed freighter, which is the other thing you can get from these planetary charts. Now, the other thing that should allow you to bring that back is a teleport. So let me teleport to the station and back and try it that way just to make sure that works still. Even though this teleporter is uh, graphically messing up. Might as well. Okay, so that's worth 140, but then once it's used, it becomes worth less. All right, so let's uh, go back. I just want to check something. Sometimes they sell navigational data. I don't know if they still do that or not. Don't see it. Uh, now that I'm rich, I will take this chromatic metal, though. And I know I'm going to need five microprocessors. I already have one, so let's go ahead and buy four. Um, I assume I'm going to need them, I should say. Anything cool fly in that I can buy? I could buy that. C-Class 24 plus 15, which is not as good as what I got. There's a B-Class 26 plus 17, which is better than what I got, but not much. All right, now I left stuff in here, and yeah, it's still there. So, so far, so good with that. All right, let's bring that in. Now teleport back. Wait a minute, hold on. Sometimes they sell nav data here. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry about parking there, buddy. But this is Bob's place. What are you going to do about it? <clears throat> nope. All right. Did I... Um, trash the components in that. I did not. Look at you, Bob. Uh, exosuit, exosuit, exosuit. So let's go ahead and scrap that. Get another 2.6 million. Easy peasy. And we got a couple uh, crappy C-Class modules. So we're going to go ahead and sell those. But we're going to sell. So we go ahead and do that. And now let's switch over to our ship. And now we can get rid of these as well. Which I think I will. I think I will. Let's see if this is reset. Nope, that's a chair. Nope, it's still a chair. All right, now if we wanted to buy an unbroken one, we could. It's 22 million. Wow. Maybe not yet. Oh, you, sir. I have um, some parts that maybe you can use to uh, fix your ship. Let's go ahead and offer to trade, sell. Uh, spool of nano cables. All right, where's the big money? Here we go. Subatomic regulators and recycled circuitry. Uh, we'll get that out of my inventory as well as that. As well as that. We're good. Kind of like this one. This is a heavy fighter. 
It's like a Beeble Bum machine. 24 plus 10, and I'm at 25 plus 13. So that's 24, 14. That's mm, not any better. But I do dig on these colors. I will buy one of these when I find a decent one. Will not buy one of these. All right. All right, so we scrapped three ships. It's time to move on in the quest line a little bit. I think I'm out of nav data. I am. So uh, let's go to the signal source and see what is up. All right, so we're coming down on a possible distress signal on our home planet, or our starter planet, I should say. Now this should be a crashed freighter. And there it is. Just looking for my free parking. Now when that circle turns green, you can go ahead and hit the land button and it'll lock into it. All right. Now I have messed around with freighters a little bit and I noticed a few differences. We'll show you here in just a sec. Let's talk to this guy first. Log damaged. The signal has led me to a wrecked freighter, colossal fragments of metal scattered across the landscape. Were these messages, were these messages nothing but the misfiring circuits of a long forgotten ruin? Nestled among the debris, I find the pilot's log blinking, awaiting input. Request the log. Instead of displaying the ship's log, the terminal spits out a strange sequence of numbers. They are followed by a short message. <clears throat> the anomaly comes for the stars. Take flight. A schematic for a hyperdrive is attached to the end of the message. I pulled the blueprint from the computer, but the hyperdrive blueprint is for a conventional starship, not a freighter of this size. Someone placed this here after the crash, hoping it would be found. Well, that was nice of them. And look, we just happen to have the materials we need. If you don't, it's going to give you a quest to go buy the microprocessors, and uh, you saw that they were more expensive now. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and install our hyperdrive. Bam. 125 chromatic metal and five microprocessors. We got it. All right, so that's done. But while we're here, I want to show you guys this. There are uh, five or six of these cargo pods in this freighter. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's six. Um, and you can open these up and get some uh, free stuff. Now, it used to be it cost materials to do this, but now they're just uh, got poop and goop in them. So uh, we'll take the poop and goop. And then you just have to wait for it. And there we go. We got some nanites. Now you want to move quick because there is some uh, noxious gases that come out of there. You have that much poop and goop in you. Stuff's going to happen. Am I right? Just wait for it. There we go. As soon as it releases, you are free. All right. There's one outside here. Then there's one over on the other side. It's coming down hard with my big ball. Let's go. Launch fuel. Now, as I was looking for money-making things, I noticed launch fuel costs like 65000 to buy now. And uh, it'd be so much cheaper for us to make it. And I was hoping we could sell it for close to that. No, we, we sell it for like a 1000 or a couple thousand. So uh, that is not one of the ways to make money. I thought it might be. But we're looking for other methods. And I've got a few more ideas I'll share with you as we go. Any matter housing. Okay. Didn't get anything super great there. Auto diagnostic report. Hyperdrive successfully installed. Fuel stand is empty. My hyperdrive is complete. Perhaps I really will find answers out amidst the stars. But without warp cells, I will be going nowhere. I need to find a source of antimatter. So it tells us to tune our scanners to antimatter. We need to fly into space and then hit our scan button. Now we don't actually tune it. This is just kind of part of the, the dialogue process, but um, you can't tune it to antimatter on your own or any other time to find it. All right, we're finally going to a new planet. This is the infested one. So infested planets um, are gonna have eggs on them and everything's gonna have a funky look to it. You will see um, 
the uh, the little horrors, the little green monsters that spit acid at you um, if you grab the eggs. And that, I think, is where it's taking us right now is to an abandoned building. Now, I have seen um, some of the worms that spit out of the ground, the nests, um, on one of these planets. I don't know that it's on all of them, but uh, it was pretty cool. The thing that we got from the expedition, uh, maybe four or five, I can't remember which one it was. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is where it wants me to land. Again, it's one of those get out and use your visor to find it things. Look at that, sandworm. Oh God, he's coming right for us. What the heck? Look like he turned for me. Oh my God. Um, bro. Uh, he ate me. But it didn't hurt. It's crazy though, huh? So we got a new planet and uh, the color seems a little weird on this planet too, doesn't it? Another nine species planets. Okay, so there's the whispering eggs. And I will show you guys what we're gonna do with those here momentarily. It's got a real eerie vibe to it, doesn't it? See, these are usually purple, so the colors are definitely muted on this planet. All right, so we need to come to this corrupted terminal and uh, we're gonna scoop out the goop and see what it says. Terminal online, selecting key, decrypting, success. The terminal is clogged with an unnerving pulsating slime. Nevertheless, it appears to function. As I touch the input panel, the alien substance reacts violently. I make a note to avoid getting closer. Oh, that's new. A device opens, revealing a single unblinking crimson eye. It prints out a blueprint for antimatter, accompanied by a strange message. Take blueprint, take blueprint and read log. You will find us when the time is right. 16, 16, 16, 16. And now we have the blueprint for antimatter. Nice. Now watch out on the ceilings of these places because there can be little uh, plants that try to smack you. Super creepy. All right. Lots of facium. Facium is poop, by the way, if you didn't know that. And then this is uh, where you check your stonks. Uh-huh. Die. Why, why, why you no die? Yeah, that sucks. Usually you can kill that. Now, these abandoned buildings are a great source for getting nanites if you're willing to brave the uh, monsters and grab these eggs. Now, I'm going to show you a couple different techniques to do it. And I'll show you what I do. Now, uh, I'm interested to see what it's going to be like on this new difficulty level. So we're going to go back to the old faithful way and uh, see if it still works. And the old faithful way is you dig, you get your terrain manipulator out. And uh, you dig a hole at an angle underneath these guys. And you want it to be kind of deep. Okay? So uh, don't wuss out. Make sure you go deep. It's okay. There you go, and you want to make sure that you've uncovered the eggs. And might have done a little bit too much there. It'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to go around and dig holes under all of them like that, and then I'll bring you back and show you what we do. Jeez, worm. Scary, bro. And then I'll grab those the old-fashioned way. Just to see what is up. A movie right here. All right, so I've dug holes under all but uh, two of them, and I'll kind of show you what I do. Ooh, look at these. Those are really cool. Now, um, you can get those as pets if you want, the white butterfly worms. Look at them. Unfortunately, I don't know how to make creature pellets yet, do I? No. All right. So, let's uh, let's do this and see what happens. Now, this is normal mode. I'm interested to see uh, if I'm going to lose some 
stuff. Oh, look at that. I connected those holes unbeknownst to me. That's what happens when you go deep enough. All right. So, uh, as I shoot these eggs, they're going to drop, and these green biological horrors are going to emerge. Now, it used to be they wouldn't come underground. Let's see if that's still the case. You want to grab these things relatively quick so that uh, they don't disappear, because they will disappear. So I just kind of hold down the button to pick them up as I'm shooting. Hey, buddy. You good? Go away. See, he won't come down here and get me. Oh, wait, maybe he will. Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think he went above me. All right, now I'm not sure if I got them all, so I'm going to go into photo mode real quick. I could just run out and look. Okay, there is one more right here. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Excuse me, buddy. Oh, God. Okay. He just he just glitched me out of the hole. And I am taking some damage. So, it's definitely not quite as safe as it used to be. It is a lot safer than... Um, being up above the ground and running. And then what you do is you just kind of jetpack from hole to hole. So we're gonna jump out of this hole, jump on the roof, and then jump into these holes down here. And hope that guy stays up there. Now you can also throw down a base computer and build walls around these things if you wanna make kind of a repeatable process here. But, um, I generally don't use the resources for that. Now, eventually it will subside, so if you want to take a lot of time, you can just kind of wait for them to go away, but as soon as you shoot another one, they're coming back. All right. Dude, the worm. Is that the worm again? There he goes. Okay. Now, the other ones I've left over here by my ship, and I'll show you kind of how I used to do it back in the day when I wasn't really worried about stuff shooting me on normal mode. Just kind of go and keep moving. Got him. Thanks guys. Appreciate your time. All right, anything break on my exosuit? No, sweet, I made it. And I got 26. That's probably a new record for me. Um, and the reason you want these is because they're worth 69,000 a piece, <laughs> um, but you can refine these into 50 nanites a piece. So that's gonna be 500, 1,000, uh, 1,300 nanites right there, which not bad. So you just gotta decide, do you need the money more or the nanites more right now? All right, so now it wants us to make antimatter. Go ahead and craft that. And then it's gonna tell us to make um, the antimatter housing, which we actually got one already uh, out of that uh, container. Sometimes you just get the whole uh, fuel out of the container. So we're gonna create the warp cell and then fuel the hyperdrive. That's interesting, it says 25%. Hmm, it used to be 20%. You used to be able to stick five of them in there. All right. So, hyperdrive is refueled, launch into space and test the interstellar system. So now we can warp to a brand new system. Let's do it. New systems mean new discoveries. Now you can go the direction of the galactic core or you can go free explore um, or the mesh or the mission you're on. I'm not on a mission right now. So I'm going to go free explore actually and kind of look around. Um, I'd like to go to a Viking system for the nanites. And Vikings have more freighters and they don't look as dumb as Gex. I realize a lot of people like Gek, and uh, I'm just messing around, guys. So don't get uh, don't get too hurt if you're a Gek fan. 
Oh, look at that. Three stars. That is a beautiful entrance. I don't know what happened to the uh, color. Am I a weird filter? Weird. Starship monitoring system reports error. Guidance system malfunction. Searching for other routes. Searching. Obtained. Destination in 16, 16, 16. Accept new guidance. Yeah, sure, why not? Guidance accepted. Plotting route. All right, now we need some tritium, so I'm gonna shoot uh, some asteroids. Now you can also hit your scan button and it'll tell you where some tritium rich spots are, but it's been my experience that most asteroids are gonna have tritium. Um, Otherwise, you're going to get silver or gold, which is valuable, so just just shoot a bunch. Guys, if you made it all the way to the end, please hit that like button. We made some money early game. We made some early game nanites, and we made it to our next system. We're going to pick this up tomorrow where we left off today. And uh, guys, remember, if you're going to be a Bob, have fun with it. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Thanks so much.